Hey, Citizens Black here, and today I wanted to give some quick tips on how to bounty hunt because it can be tough, especially with the advancements the team has made on the AI in recent patches. The days of flying straight ahead and blowing them up before they reach you is mostly long gone. Now these are good tips for the solo player, but as with many things in Star Citizen, grouping up can help you out tremendously. Now remember to like, subscribe, and comment below because every little bit helps since most of my videos are so short the algorithm pretty much hates my face. Alright, so you've been out bounty hunting and how many times is this happening to you? Sucks, done it. Here are some things you can do to survive longer and improve your overall experience. Now this video is not going into a flight controls or which is better, keyboard and mouse or flight sticks. These are just basic tips to help you improve and understand how to become better at bounties in general. Alright, now the first thing as mentioned earlier is not to fly straight at them. Now you're providing the AI the easiest target and they will start shooting at you and depleting your shields usually before you can even get a shot off. Even in the beginning, flying straight in to try and take out the bounty target and saying screw the additional will land so many hits on your ship and usually by more than one ship, which means your ships are gone pretty fast, usually within seconds. Instead, try to fly toward the nearest target to you and then start pulling them away or peeling them off. Now, get them to try and leave the group and follow you. Then swing back around and take care of business. Now, being patient and not going for a quick fight will usually allow you to last longer and actually complete the mission. Alright, so the next important factor is going to be strafing. You'll be surprised how often this has not only saved my bacon, but also allowed me to get tons of shots in or destroy my target. The AI does not always strafe, or if so, not very well, so strafing whether side to side or up and down will reduce how often you are shot. Alright, so let's talk about staying on target. Now, if you don't feel comfortable flying and maneuvering well enough to get in close to the enemy, then you need to just learn by doing. So, follow your enemies around. Now, the lower tier bounties are full of smaller ships, which are hard to stay with, so those make for great training ground missions for you to get better. The more you stick and move and can learn to gain better positions on the targets to land better and longer burst shots and to avoid them gaining distance on you will mean they fire missiles less and you're able to keep them too busy to be able to focus on landing shots. The last thing you want is a fight where you are taking too many shots and thus you are having to fly away and be the one chased while you regain your shields. Now speaking of shields, your shields regen as do your enemy shields. Shields take sustained damage to penetrate the shields to start doing ship damage, so you need to keep that in mind. If you hear the computer navigation telling you your shields are hit, you need to move because the enemy has figured out your pattern and is pretty much tearing you up. Don't wait around for shields to become critical before deciding to evade and run away to allow your shields to regen. By then, they are landing hard hits to your ship, especially as you're fleeing, and you're taking damage. There's nothing wrong with living to fight again another day, so fly off to let those shields regain their strength and then come back into the fight. Each time you swing back into the fray, you need to try a different approach because if you had to run away, the last tactic wasn't really working for you. Remember that you need to set yourself up to have good shots lined up so you can squeeze that trigger for longer bursts so you can actually inflict ship damage. Otherwise, if you're firing for a few seconds and then having to abruptly stop to get a better position or run away and then come back in, you're allowing valuable seconds to pass by where their shields are regening and you aren't getting through and just wasting ammo. Alright, now as for aiming and using the pip, there are two modes you can use which you can set up in the game settings menu as seen here on the screen. And you can set up a key binding to switch between the two. There's lag and there's lead. Many new players will use lead, especially when fighting smaller ships because you're shooting at where the ship will be and land more hits, but you're sacrificing being able to target specific parts of the ship, which is important with the larger ships. So my suggestion is to set up a keybind and switch them based on the situation and as your skill level increases. Another very important aspect of dogfighting is using the capacitor system. Now, it might seem complicated, but it really isn't and can really help you push your system to the limits of where you need them to be. So really quick here, your F5, F6, F7, and F8 keys, which are centered at the top of your keyboard and easily accessible, control your power for your shields, weapons, and engines. If you need more power to your weapons because you want to inflict maximum damage to try and finish off your target, hit the F5 key. And your weapons will gain more power if you're using laser repeaters. This means more shots before running out of energy. If your shields are taking a beating, start flying away and boost your speed 
speed and hit F7 to reinforce those shields so they regen faster. If you need to get away and leave the fight and want to go faster, then hit F6 so your engines get a boost. Each time you hit one of these keys, you will see this little graph switch points toward the increased power so you can visually check to see which component is getting more power and if you ever want to reset it back to have everything equally, just hit F8 and it goes back to center by default. Getting used to using these during combat can be a game changer for you. Now upgrading your ship is another very important part of becoming better because the stock loadouts from most ships is just not very good. There are some decently easy missions I will share near the end of the video to help you gain practice and also net some money, but you need to first understand how the upgrades work. I do have videos on suggested loadouts for many of the different ships in the game, including all of the beginner ships, and that link will play at the end of this video. With your weapons, they go by size with the higher the size, the more powerful the weapon. Your guns mount onto the ships and I either of two ways, fixed or gimbaled. Fixed means the guns can only shoot straight ahead. Gimbled means the guns can swivel and hit targets on the sides as you pass, etc. Gimbled are good in some situations and a good setup for beginners because it will allow you to hit more targets more often and allow you to get better at flying. However, when using gimbaled weapons, you have to go down a size in weapons. So for instance, the Avenger Titan has three guns and if you gimbaled all three, you would have two size two guns and one size three gun. But if you went fixed, you would have two size three guns and one size four gun. The damage is considerably less with the gimbaled weapons, but you might hit more as a beginner. There are also various gun damage types, but as a beginner, you will be focusing on laser repeaters and laser cannons as these are beginner friendly and you are not bothered with running out of ammo. If you decide to go up against players at a later time, then Gatlin ballistic guns might be what you want to use, at least mixed in, but then you will need to watch your ammo because if you run out, you'll be a flying toaster unable to fire back at anything. There are other weapon types that are good for certain situations but I cover those more in depth on my loadout videos. The last topic I want to touch on are missiles. Missiles are useful anytime there is distance between you and your enemy where your guns cannot reach them yet. If you're not shooting them, you better believe the enemy is shooting them at you, which can be dangerous while you're running away and waiting on those shields to regen. When you see the incoming missile notice, you need to push the H key, which will drop decoys. You can hold right alt plus H to increase the burst size of decoys, or left alt and H to decrease the size, or just push H like your life depends on it to quickly drop something, and also after you drop those decoys, make sure to strafe upwards using the space key on your keyboard. The decoys work most of the time, but just like in many any flight movies, they sometimes don't work and if you have a small ship like an Aurora, you could be destroyed in one hit, even with your shields pretty much at full. On bigger ships if you're hit, you might not be destroyed but you'll most likely be taking ship damage. Remember to try and fire these when you're running, even if that means just turning back for a second to hit them before continuing on with your shield regen runaway. Also currently in game, many of the missiles are not in a good place so everyone's choice no matter what size are the electromagnetic missiles which seem to find their target more often than any of the others. This will most definitely change in the future once a ship component revamp is done, but for now, just equip electromagnetic missiles and you'll see more hits happen with less evasion from the enemy. Now if you're struggling and you need money, you can look for illegal monitor missions under the mercenary tab where you're sent to a comm array where you can scan for monitors, find all three, and shoot them down. These are stationary targets which usually pays out around 20k and is a good way to start making money and getting used to flying. Sometimes NPC pirates might also spawn in so this is a good opportunity to learn to fight better or you can run and quantum travel out of there after completing the mission to avoid the fight but I would try to take them on if you can at least for practice. Going into the arena commander game mode from the main menu is another way to get some practice in to get better at dogfighting with ships. Alright so that's going to do it for this bounty hunting guide. I hope this helps elevate your skills and knowledge in a way that is helpful in taking on bounties and enjoying one of the funner gameplay loops in Star Citizen. Remember to be kind to your fellow gamers, return your neighbor's garden utensils, and stay positive citizens.